So the next theme is Love Relief, and the title is IMD's Code for Lithium Battery Reverse Logistics. Please welcome Team Love Relief. Honorable Secretary General of IMO, distinguished delegates, and ladies and gentlemen, good morning. This is Team Love Relief, and it is a great honor and pleasure for us to be here today. The issue we would like to address today is the safety concerns in terms of the lithium-ion battery reverse logistics with the proposal of well-categorized IMDG code for safe maritime transportation of used batteries for reuse and recycling. Our proposal is built up with following procedures. First, IMO's objectives and expected benefits. Second, needs and urgency. Third, current state and problems, then lastly, proposal with future action required. According to the data presented, there is a rapid growth in the electric vehicle and EV batteries market, and so does the quantity of used batteries being accumulated. The entire world is in, is in an absolute enthusiasm about this issue, which is also the reason our team decided to discuss this. Before getting down to main discussion, there is a need for us to go through IMO's objectives, specifically how our proposal is related to our discussion. The IMO's objectives are summed up in one brief sentence, safe, secure, and efficient shipping on clean oceans. In particular, the issue we would like to address today is in compliance with SD1 and SD6 pertaining to the implementation of, re of the regulation and its effectiveness. Hence, we believe that this proposal would be a commitment to IMO's mission to promote safe and sustainable shipping by adopting the highest practicable standards of maritime safety. To begin with, the importance of recycle and reuse is explained with three benefits. First, it is economically well off, followed by a lower manufacturing cost. The cost-benefit analysis reinforces this statement. Second, it reduces the quantity of materials going into landfills leading to eco-friendly results. Third, global duty policies are in close compliance with our discussion. Policies encourage recycle and reuse of batteries, specifically when it comes to renewable energy, which requires lots of storage. In the following section, we will be presenting the specified needs and urgency of discussing this issue in the IMO. Considering that lithium is an alkali metal with high reactivity with water, we have to be aware of its potential hazards from electrochemical perspective. Lithium ion battery itself is consists of four main components, cathode, anode, electrolyte, and separator. However, Lithium-ion battery use cathodes and anodes made of different materials with different proportions. These inconsistent proportions of the components leads to an increased unpredictability considering all various sources of chemical hazards. Dangers exist during the maritime transportation as well. The mechanism of maritime accidents is as follows. Firstly, the exothermic reactions which trigger summer runaway could lead to fires and explosions. Next, the internal source circuit or the aging and internal mechanical stress of the battery itself may also lead to an accident. Relevant accident cases are depicted in pictures shown on the slide. All of these three cases are closely related to defects in lithium-ion batteries, and these cases are more than enough to raise 
our awareness of this cost issue. We have figured out mainly four very failure causes with a reference to a report published by U.S. Department of Transportation. According to the report 2017 titled Lithium-ion Battery Safety Issues for Electric and Hybrid Plug-in Vehicles, there were mainly four types of battery failure causes, electrical, thermal, mechanical, and chemical. In addition, the paper points out that the discrepancies on lithium-ion battery history tracking system may also lead to severe accidents. We believe that there is an imperative need for IMO to be engaged. According to the statistics shown on the slide, there is a rapidly growing market of lithium-ion batteries. A massive amount of lithium, uh, used lithium-ion batteries will soon be shipped by the ocean in near future. It is a high time for IMO to take action with regard to this issue. To move on, we'll discuss the current state of, we'll discuss the current safety regulations for lithium ion battery maritime transportation and the following problems of it when applied into the used lithium ion battery. The shipment of dangerous goods or hazardous materials are regulated by IMDG code, the amendment of which is adopted by MSC uh, in 2018, renewed in every two years. According to IMDG code, the lithium ion batteries are classified under class nine, therefore loaded and handled by the rela relative UN codes. These codes are aimed to offer the criteria for sorting cargoes by dangerousness, the steps to follow up after the categorization. For, um, in, for instance, uh, the guideline for loading, packing, and handling are all different by the black cars on the package of the cargoes. To look into the used battery cargoes existing regulations, um, special provision 377 remarks the separation of used battery cargoes for recycling and new battery. The used battery cargoes for recycle must be packaged under the packaging guideline P909. Identified damaged and defective cargoes must be packaged under the packaging guideline for 908-5. But here's our, our questions. Um, is it reasonable to group all the used battery cargoes under a single terminology and apply the same regulations? And also, can the defects be perfectly detected? We are going to focus on the blind sites where the existing regulations have insufficient contents for the used battery cargo, reverse logistics. Uh, we have narrowed some problems into the following three. The first problem is that the chemical composition of each part of the battery cells vary a lot. Um, the The exact characteristics and performance of lithium-ion cells depend on the specific chemistry incorporated as graphically shown on the figure on the slide. In terms of the safety, um, NMC, NCA, LFP, and LMO all have different safety level and uh, lifespans. Furthermore, according to research, the effects of overcharge depends on the cathode active materials as well. Secondly, uh, it is impossible to trace the way used battery cargo is generated. 
The battery equipped in EV can be detached for various reasons. But can you say the used battery cargoes made by car crash and the one made by expiration have the same amount of risks? Um, the battery, used battery cargoes made by car crash may have the higher risk. The, before getting into the problem three, um, let me briefly introduce the value chain of battery. Um, the battery manufacturers produce battery from the manufacturing place and ship it overseas to assembly point. And the battery packs assembled into the modules and modules into pack. The pack is the final form that is equipped into the electric vehicle. On the other hand, in reverse logistics, uh, the batteries are not, battery packs are not dismantled into battery cells. This is because it costs higher than the utility of the recycle. Secondly, um, the battery pack has, when the battery pack is produced, the different companies use the different types of bolt and nut. So the, when the, it makes the recycling process more harder. Therefore, um, so we have built some situations. Uh, we have built some solutions in very detail against these problems. We believe that there is an imperative need for the development of well-categorized IMDG code and regulation pertaining to the reverse logistics of lithium-ion battery. We have designed a UN code to regulate the items that belong to the proper shipping name of used lithium ion batteries for reuse and recycling purpose and have designated class nine. The existing special provisions among 188 through 387 that are applied to lithium ion batteries in general will be supplementarily adopt, uh, applied to the cases of used batteries. However, the newly proposed special provisions will take priority over the existing ones. Category A will be the storage and segregation category if the special provisions are both satisfied, which will accelerate the transportation procedures. The bottom line of the special provisions that we hereby propose is to establish a safety clearance system under the supervision of IMO. Special provisions one and two specify the details behind the background certification and safety test result certification respectively. Let me go deeper into the details. So the special provision one mandates a background certification which contains composition section and history section. First, the composition section tracks the physical and electrochemical composition of cathode active material, anode active material, separator, and electrolyte. This is to examine the potential gaps in consideration of systemic failures such as separator layer thermal breakdown cathode active material breakdown, electrolyte leak, or vapor ignition. Second, the history section tracks the causes and background behind the disposal of a battery, along with the log record of cumulative abuse and service. This is to evaluate the possibility of battery failure due to cumulative damages or deterioration due to aging. So these are the reflection of cumulative damage-based perspective, and it suggests the need for an inspection upon the history of a battery. Second, the special provision two regulates the procedures behind the safety test result certification, and this incorporates the testing results after being exposed to extreme conditions such as electrical test, thermal test, mechanical test, and chemical test. The reason of incorporating these four tests is to provide appropriate countermeasures against the four major causes of battery failures that we have mentioned at the beginning of our speech. Let me go deeper into the contents of the testing. First, electrical tests will examine the external causes such as electrical short, overcharging, or over-discharging. Second, 
thermal test will examine the resistibility against high temperatures, charging at cold temperatures. And third, mechanical test will test the excessive shock impact and compression resistibility. Fourth, the chemical test will evaluate the potential for chemical contamination of internal components by water, salt water, and corrosive agents. These tests shall be conducted primarily in a non-destructive way in order to prevent unnecessary damage from the testing itself and also to eliminate the hassle of dismantling all the battery packs. Putting non-destructive testing on top of the priority is our answer to the problem unique to the, pro unique to the reverse logistics of used battery. So far, we have discussed the detailed solutions for current problems pertaining to the maritime transportation of used batteries for reuse and recycling purpose. Again, we strongly argue that this proposal would be a commitment to IMO's mission to promote safe and sustainable shipping by adopting the highest practicable standards of maritime safety. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for paying attention to our presentation. Thank you very much. So if you have any questions, please raise your hand, maybe from George. Or participants, any questions? Yeah, from George. Thank you for your very nice presentation. It's very impressive to all of us today. I would like to ask a very uh, simple question for your presentation. Uh, have you thought about uh, how your proposal can be impact, can impact on maritime industry and the other area? Sir, this delegation would like to express our sincere gratitude for your inquiry our answer to your question is that uh, the current market trend of the global energy market is that the rechargeable battery and lithium ion battery particularly is taking the lead in its uh, market value. So I think the trans maritime transportation of electric vehicle uh, rechargeable battery will be the main topic of maritime transportation for next decade, sir. Okay. Thank you for your answering. Uh, adding to your uh, response, I'd like to uh, give some comment on it. Uh, maritime society trend uh, globally nowadays, eco-friendly and uh, quite high in efficiency ships and uh, uh, smart shipping is global trend uh, of nowadays. I think uh, your proposal can be one of them after finishing your presentation and after your uh, pre proposal. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Any other questions? You know more, right? Oh, sorry, PM Master. Yeah, please ask. Thank you, Chair. Um, your presentation was very impressive. Um, our team would like to ask you um, whether there are any applicable future amended regulations for the matter in terms of IMO. Are you, are you clear? With, can you please clarify your question? I think you, you should speak a little bit loudly. I'm um, sorry? Yeah. Um, our team would like to ask you that whether there are any applicable amended future regulations for the matter in terms of the IMO. So we would like to add some more special provisions in detail pertaining to the IMDG code for maritime transportation of lithium ion battery particularly for reverse logistics. So our proposal is to uh, virtually um, uh, add or augment some special provisions to the existing provisions. It's an additional proposal, sir. 
Thank you very much for your. Thank you very much, sir. Yep, from church. Yep. Uh, thank you very much, love, relief. Uh, as far as I understand, you are proposing uh, some document for the uh, used batteries when they are uh, transported for uh, for discard or, or something. So, however, you mentioned uh, documentation and for the uh, evidence of testing, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. However, uh, I imagine uh, the such uh, batteries will be transported in a package like a container. The, the battery's uh, size will be variable. And also, if you, if uh, the, if somebody should prepare documentation for every battery by battery, how can they handle the uh, hundreds of batteries in one containers? Maybe this make some uh, a very large administrative burden for the shipper or uh, shipper uh, as well as uh, the owners. How do you think about that? Thank you for your insightful question, sir. Uh, can you give us a moment to think about your question, sir? So the main focus of our proposal is the rechargeable batteries for electric, electrical vehicle, which weigh around 200 to 300 kilograms. And the battery packs are mostly transported in the form of module of, or packs without being dismantled when it comes to the reverse logistics. So our proposal contains uh, countermeasures for such problems, which are, first, we are adopting the non-destructive testing method, and this doesn't incorporate the process of dismantling all the battery packs, so it can reduce the time and efforts required for the testing of the battery. And the second one, second solution is that the testing authority shall be delegated to nationally or federally recognized testing laboratories by the government. And this will facilitate the procedures of testing as well as uh, guaranteeing the professionality of testing. So uh, we are pretty aware of the fact that the testing, the amount of the battery packs that should be tested is gigantic. So I think uh, incorporating uh, professional testing laboratories, whether it be private sector or public sector, can be an answer to your question, sir. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, are you, uh, did you imagine how big, how big, uh, the, how the size of the batteries you are, uh, when you, uh, when you're making this proposal? Uh, I understood some, I, in my uh, assumption, I thought about some small battery also. However, you are saying that, uh, you are saying that this regulation applies to the big batteries such as uh, 200 kilograms and 300 kilograms only. Cor correct, sir. Not, not inclusive the small batteries. So, so, so we, our proposal may include the uh, uh, regulation uh, pertaining to the small ones. However, the small batteries tend to be transported via air, sir. So, so for maritime transportation, I think bigger ones from 200 kilograms to 300 are the main focus. So that's why we try to focus on the uh, bigger size electric uh, batteries, sir. Thank you. Uh, Tim, Mayor Salutaris, please. Um, 
Um, thank you. Uh, frankly speaking, I really enjoyed your speech and it was really interesting. One thing that I clearly doubt about this is about the, assess the assigning new code provision, special provision access to. In this context, what it entitles here is the issuing authority is largely given to the national authority in each member state after confirmation of test results of federally recognized testing laboratories. One thing I have in mind here is that given that this is a cutting edge technologies that you want to implement here, how do you actually ensure that all, all, all member states have a reserve of facilities and technologies here? And how do you ensure the large scope of this policy if that's what you want to do at the end of this day? Uh, I think we are wearing masks, so when you speak, I think you should speak a little bit slowly and clearly. So you, you, you are meaning like how they can persuade the, each, each state, right? For yeah. changing the regulation or anything, right? Um, okay, yeah, that that makes sense. Okay, yeah. How how so, can you convince? So, is your question about mandating all the member states to uh, conduct the testing upon the ships or vessels that transport? Um, okay, to clarify, if your goal is to have all the reserve rights and all the efficiency deserved by all member states. How do we ensure this technology widely shared by all member states, given that this is a very high-tech, cutting-edge technology at this moment? Sir, so that's uh, why we want to focus on the global uh, cooperation when it this uh, kind of matters. Yeah, sorry, time's up. <laughs> yeah. uh, thank you very much. Uh, please, uh, we will go to the next team. Uh, so you can go to your seat.